for those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes about uh, how you might go about correcting your literature review. Today is March 11th, and we're working towards completing our final draft of our thesis paper by May 21st of 2021. So this week and next week, you'll be receiving feedback from me about your theory, about your literature review up to this point, and uh, you'll receive a grade. You'll receive feedback in the form of comments along the right-hand side of your uh, Word document, and you're going to be receiving a um, a, a video file where I'm showing different issues that were detected from Grammarly. Now, as I mentioned before, we need to be careful with those corrections, those, uh, those observations or those uh, errors that were detected by Grammarly. Some will need to be changed. There will be cases where changes won't be necessary. It's very important that you know why you're changing the text, how you're changing it, the way that you need to change it, not just that you're um, changing it just because it was detected from or by Grammarly. There, uh, is, there are going to be cases where it detects, for example, the word important, and it will suggest words like vital or essential. Now, if you're familiar with the page, the literature review guide that we've talked a lot about, you'll notice that words like important, essential, vital, those words are going to be uh, need to be avoided altogether. So what I would suggest that you do first is to become familiar with this page in terms of some of the words to avoid, some of the words uh, and phrases and ways of writing we want to try to avoid in academic writing. So I would take each one of these in turn, one by one, and search your entire document for each one of these. And again, I would take it one by one instead of trying to Remember all of the information, break it down, and uh, do the same with this page called Meal Plan. The Meal Plan relates primarily to body paragraph development, looking at sentences as functioning either as a main idea, evidence, analysis, or a link or a summarizing sentence at the end. So if you think of each sentence within a body paragraph as having these one of these four functions, then it's just a matter of placement. Where do they belong? The main idea of the topic sentence should begin a body paragraph. We know that evidence should come before analysis sentences. Since analysis sentence where we are commenting, we're explaining, we're making relationships between the evidence sentences in terms of the main idea. Right? So we need to look at not only at each of the, the sentences within a body paragraph as, in terms of how they function, but also their placement, where they occur in a body paragraph. Remember that body paragraph should have between five to eight sentences, more or less. And typically, body paragraphs uh, will not exceed 200 to 220 words for the most part. Maybe some exceptions to that, those, uh, to those figures. But you know, when we when I see paragraphs that are Three, four, I've seen some paragraphs uh, in excess of 500 words. Then, in most of those cases, we're better off dividing up those paragraphs into separate paragraphs. All right, so keep that in mind. Also, there will be cases where I'm going to provide this link to the APA guide, specifically looking at this sway, this presentation where I include some examples of common references according to the seventh edition. Remember that uh, the, uh, some of the changes that relate to the seventh edition um, relate to the, uh, the references, specifically the, the journal articles with the DOI. So there are new ways now that we need to state our references and our references section at the end of our text. So I've included some of the main examples or the typical references that I see most often. I've included some examples here, so take a look at uh, this presentation. You might find this page, the introduction page, or the introduction paragraph page, uh, useful. And remember that the introduction, we want to focus after the hook and before the thesis statement at the end of the introduction paragraph, we want to primarily focus on the problem, the context of the problem. 
If it helps, think about the question words, the what, the how, the why, the when, the where, with whom. Think of those question words in terms of what you could discuss about the problem. Also make sure that you include at least one citation to support the problem. Okay, so a lot of times uh, writers will want to include the solution. They'll want to jump to possible solutions or things uh, that researchers have suggested that uh, provide a solution to the problem. But we want to hold off and stick primarily to the context of the problem until we get to the thesis. Remember that we want to offer a transition to begin our thesis statement. So we're segueing from the problem to the thesis statement. You can think of the introduction paragraph really as a problem solution paragraph where you're introducing the context of the problem and at the very end, the last sentence, we're going to offer a solution. That is our thesis statement. Think of the solution, really think of the entire literature review as a long discussion providing a solution to the problem that you introduced in the introduction paragraph. All right, so I have a page here that goes into all of that right, in greater detail along with the video. Take a look at that if you need to uh, review your introduction paragraph. The very last paragraph of our literature review is going to be a transition paragraph. I'm using the word transitional paragraph in the sense that we're transitioning from the theory now to the method section or our own research. This is where we can introduce now for the first time in the transitional paragraph, we can mention our own, par our own research. We can say, based on this research, right, the purpose of this research is to investigate the following research questions. List out your questions. All right, so we don't want to introduce or mention our study. Sometimes I see this in the introduction paragraph. Some writers will say this research seeks to, we typically don't want to include that in the introduction paragraph. The theory, including the introduction paragraph, is all about what others have said about the, uh, the research questions. But we're not mentioning the research questions until the very end. So in the transitional paragraph, we want to restate the thesis. We want to restate the problem, segue into our uh, questions, our research questions, and then conclude with a closing sentence. This is going to be our transitional paragraph before we begin the methods section where we look at things like participants, instruments, and procedure. So here we have some information along with the video. If you need further clarification, I highly recommend that you take a look at this page. Now here I'm including a page where I am basically consolidating some of the key points that I spend the most of my time uh, discussing in terms of the feedback. So you might find this useful uh, if you want to review, or, uh, review this. But I want to give you a tip here on how, or an approach, how you can uh, make changes to your Word document. Okay, based on the feedback that I provide, based on the information you find in, in Notion. But let me show you a way that you can do this. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I would search your document. I would select options here and select the option where it says find whole words only. Now there are going to be three key words that I think if we, for the most part, eliminate or remove or avoid these words altogether, it's going to drastically improve our writing. All right, so I'm going to open up a Word document here, and I'm going to talk about now specifically uh, some strategies or ways that you can go about modifying, checking your, your text, making some of these final changes, both in terms of the feedback that I'm providing you, along with some of the content that can be found in the Notion page. So the first thing that, that I would do is I would go in and I would do a search I would select first options and select the option that says find whole words only. And I'm going to look for three main words or three words that I think if you avoid for the most part, uh, this will drastically improve your writing. The first being the pronoun it. Now you'll notice here that we can easily find and locate those cases where we've used it either as a, per a pro personal pronoun, a subject pronoun, or an object pronoun. Either way, 
for the most part, we can try to remove or uh, just re uh, avoid this word by by changing and actually expanding on what the pronoun it represents. So the first way that you can avoid this uh, personal pronoun or object pronoun is by using direct repetition. So direct repetition is where you're going to then you're going to actually repeat the word that was stated earlier. Usually these pronouns are referring to um, concepts or ideas that were previously presented in the text. Not always, but most in most cases it is. Uh, regardless if it's pointing to something that was mentioned prior in the text or if it, it's referring to something outside of the text, we want in most cases to state what that is. Direct repetition is one way to do that. You can actually repeat what it is, what it stands for. Um, we don't want to overuse direct repetition. We don't want to overuse anything, actually. And, but certainly direct repetition is a valid and sometimes really the best option uh, depending on the discourse, depending on uh, what was stated earlier and what you're about to state going forward. So direct repetition. This is one way that you can remove or avoid the pronoun it. The second way that you can avoid the pronoun is to include a synonym. So find a word or phrase that is similar in meaning and use that. You can also use hyper or hyponyms. Right? Think of hypernyms and hyponyms as word families. All right, so if you mentioned cars earlier and in this sentence you want to mention Ferrari, then you're using word families. You're using hyper and hyponyms. So Ferrari, the word Ferrari would be a hyponym of the word cars, or cars would be a hypernym of the word uh, Ferrari. Okay, so think of word families. This is an another way that you can avoid the pronoun. Now, regardless of these three ways that you can use to avoid the pronoun, in addition to these three ways, think of paraphrasing, that is adding phrases and clauses, for example, prepositional phrases, and relative clauses. These are excellent ways that you can elaborate or expand on what it is, the antecedent of the pronoun, uh, whether you're using the direct repetition, a synonym, or a hypo or hypernym, expand on it. Use additional language through phrases and clauses to dig deeper into what you're saying. Usually, in the case of hypernym, hypernyms and hyponyms, we're typically moving from the general to the specific, especially within the context of a single paragraph. And so, in addition to those hypernyms that are being used or the hyponyms that are being used, you can expand even further, again, through the use of clauses and phrases. Okay, so. These are three ways, in addition to paraphrasing and expanding on the idea that you can, uh, where you can avoid the, the pronoun, it. Another word to avoid, can. Do a search and see how many times you're using the modal can. In most cases, especially with this particular modal, we can remove can, the modal can, and stick to the main verb. Okay. This is going to make our writing sound more assertive. So for the most part, we can avoid the modal can. We can also avoid the auxiliary verb will. Will. So do a search and see how many times you're using the future tense. Right? Find how many times you're using the future tense. Again, make sure that you're using find whole word only. This will just filter uh, and so that you get only those results that will is being used as a, as a complete word. Find those times where you're using the future tense. And in most cases, it's best to move from the future tense to the present tense. All right, so it, the word it, the word can, the word will, in most cases. If we can avoid those three, this will go a long way in improving your writing. The search feature is also good when you're looking at your references and citations. So one of the things I would always recommend that you do is do a very quick search, right? 
Besides the fact that we want to make sure that all of our references are according to the APA manual, according to the seventh edition, we also want to make sure that we have a citation for each reference, at least one citation for each reference. So simply by copying, pasting, and doing a search, we can look at a glance to see how many citations we have, because we don't want to have too many citations. We can also see if we're using parenthetical citations over narrative citations. Please choose narrative citations over narr narrative. We want to choose parenthetical, maybe I said that wrong, choose parenthetical citations over narrative citations. It's best to focus on the concepts more than focusing on the authors. Make sure the citations are within the parentheses, for, and in most cases, they occur at the end of a sentence. You can also check at a glance that there are no errors in punctuation. Sometimes we mistakenly include a period before the citation, the end of the sentence, but before the citation, but we want instead to include the period after the citation. Okay, so there's no punctuation between the last word and the citation itself. So we can easily check that by doing this search. And we can go and search the search the next uh, reference and do the same thing. Are they parenthetical citations? Any issues with periods as far as punctuation, ending punctuation? And how many citations do I have? Right? Do I have a good number? I mean, do I have at least one? But we also don't want to have too many citations. And you go on and continue on through and check each one one by one. Once you finish this process, I would do the same with your citations. Again, we want to make sure we have at least one citation for every reference. We want to make sure that we have for each citation one reference. So this will check from references to citations, but we would need to continue this process to make sure that you don't have a citation out there with no reference. And that won't be detected, obviously, if we limit our search to references to citations. So this is what I would uh, suggest that everyone do, checking your references and citations and checking, in this case, those three words, it, can, and will, and, and then go from there based on the content, based on what we've talked about so far here. We look at the literature review guide and we're looking at words to avoid. Just take each one of these one by one. So you would take the word uh, always or never, right? Or important, especially this one, important. You could just do a search for important. Now, in this case, you might want to not select whole word and and just type in the first few letters where this would include importance or important or importantly any form of the word and you know it's uh in this case of course it's no problem because it's in the references but you want to um, see if there are any cases where you're you've you've been using the word throughout your text and just doing search using the search feature will, I think, help you a lot uh, to that end. All right, guys, we'll stop there. I hope this helps. I, I want everyone to know, regardless of the grade that you have received so far, I'm expecting everyone to make changes. I'm expecting everyone to take a look at the pages that I've included in Notion, along with my feedback, along with some of the corrections made by Grammarly, and modifying your text by the due date May 21st, 2021. And at that point, I will reevaluate, reassess, and when it's warranted, when you have made those changes, change your grade accordingly. If anybody has any questions, I highly recommend first that you go through some of these steps that I'm sharing with you today first, and then come to me with questions, whether there are questions that we address in our tutoring sessions and or outside of our tutoring sessions in the form of just post to your Word document, or if we need to discuss more important issues, uh, we can meet outside of our tutoring sessions as needed. All right, so I hope this helps, guys, and we'll see you in our next tutoring session.